Good hello my sweet friends and welcome to my channel. Today we are going to be discussing my favorite books I read in 2020. Before we get started, I wanted to get a couple announcements out of the way. If you don't follow me on Twitter, you will not know that I made this update. I have decided in 2021, we are going to be doing true crime videos as well as going back to doing some book videos. I really miss making book videos. Um, it's something that I love doing. I love reading. I love critiquing. I got my degree in English, so I really, really miss doing book videos. So I want to kind of bring that back as well as the true crime videos in 2021. So we are going to be doing that. A couple of other things to note. I haven't talked about this on my YouTube channel yet, but I do Dungeons and Dragons every single week. I am a cast member in the Tabletop Tavern. Um, TTT is easily the highlight of my week. I play a half-elf noble sorceress named Leon Labelle. I adore her. We are going to be a, doing episode 15 this week. We are coming to the end of the first season and I am just so excited to be doing this campaign with some of my closest friends here on the internet. Um, I have linked everything to do with Tabletop Tavern down below. It is the most fun that I have every week. It is literally the highlight of kind of everything every week. It really got me through quarantine and now is a perfect time to start watching and listening because we are coming to the end of the first season. It would be the perfect time for you to catch up to figure out what's going on. I really love it. It is a completely homebrew campaign where we are telling our own story and I really love it. I've linked it down below. I would highly encourage you to check it out on YouTube so that you can watch all of the backlogged episodes as well as every Thursday Day at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we do an episode live. So it's a live performance of Dungeons and Dragons on the channel, the Twitch channel, the Tabletop Tavern that I have linked below. And I just love it. I have so much fun doing it. This is in addition to me streaming on my Twitch channel, which is twitch.tv slash Victoria Shaz. A couple of other things, we are doing a book club uh, every single month in 2021. So if you would like to join my Discord and participate in the book club, the book that we are reading this month is Rebecca. Becca by Daphne du Maurier and uh, I'm about 40% in and I'm obsessed with it so far. It's really amazing. So if you want to participate in a book club with the lovely fantastic community, uh, click the link below to join my discord as well. I think that's enough for the announcements. Make sure to subscribe and hit the like button on this video if you like it and let's just jump in to my favorite books that I read in 2020. I always do these in no particular order. I don't really like like picking a very specific favorite or not favorite book. Um, I just kind of go through my Goodreads reading challenge and let you know what my favorites were for the year. This year I have picked eight favorite books. One of them is a series. So I guess technically we do have 10 favorite books because it's three books in a series, but I've picked eight separate things to talk about. The first one that I want to talk about is The Memory Police by Yoko Ogawa. This book was translated at the end of 2019, if I recall correctly, and I read the translated version at the beginning of 2020. This book is weird. This book is dystopian. It's like part dystopia, part science fiction, part horror in a lot of ways. And it's very interesting because it's a very slow paced book. If you look at it on Goodreads, you'll notice that it gets a lot of negative ratings. And it's because the book is very introspective and very slow. And I think when people are looking at horror or dystopia, they're not necessarily expecting something that's introspective and slow, but that's what they get with the memory police. The reason that the memory police is on my list is because it is easily one of the books that has played on my mind for the whole year. I can't stop thinking about it still. And I read it like last January is about the importance of memory, the role that memory plays in our society, and what happens when memories just start to leave. What if you no longer know what a bird is? What if you no longer know what fear is? What if you no longer know what this, your finger, is? Or your hand? What happens when those things are erased from the collective? And what happens to the people who can remember those things? And that's what the memory police really dives into and it's really fantastic. It's incredibly well done. Again, easily one of my favorite books that I read this year. I absolutely adored it. And like I said, it's quite slow. So if you're not into slow paced books, then it might not be the best choice for you, but I do highly recommend it because it's just amazing, incredible, stunning, fantastic. There are really, I could just keep going 
I could just keep going. The next book I want to talk about is This Is How You Lose the Time War by Amal El Motar and Max Gladstone. There's two authors. I always forget Max. I'm so sorry, Max. You're fantastic. Um, El Motar and Gladstone worked together on this book. This book is confusing. It's relatively short, super fast read. The best way to describe it and the way I describe it to people is it is a gay, like a sapphic, time-traveling Mrs. and Mrs. Smith. And honestly, every time I've said that to people, it sells them on it. I have heard some critiques of this book being too flowery, too convoluted, too confusing. It's really good. <laughs> it's amazing. Um, I love it. It's a fantastic work of fiction. And um, Gladstone and El Motar did, did such an amazing job with this book. Like I said, it is sapphic, time traveling Mrs. and Mrs. Smith. And I started it and I wasn't sure what to expect. And then I finished it in one day and it was incredible. And I loved it so much. And so if you're looking for short sapphic science fiction, uh, this is how you lose the time war is really great. You just have to go in prepared to potentially be a little confused, but it's worth it at the end. Trust me. Uh, then I'm going to talk about the Area X trilogy by Jeff Vandermeer. So I guess I have two trilogies on this list. The Area X trilogy was a series that I had had on my shelf for a very long time. And then a couple years ago, when the um, Annihilation film came out with Natalie Portman in it, I watched it. And that's not usually how I am. I'm usually the kind of person who will not consume a book or I won't consume a movie until I've read the book but in this case I was like you know what I'm gonna watch Annihilation and it ended up being one of my favorite movies of all time I really like body horror um, and it was actually Annihilation that helped me realize that I like body horror so it was kind of like a whole awakening for me she who never used to like horror who actually now really likes horror it's it, 2020 was like a real glow up for me um so Annihilation was fantastic and uh I was trying to figure out what I wanted to read next and so I picked up the Area X trilogy and let me tell you it doesn't even matter that I watched the movie first because the book is so drastically different from the film it literally doesn't matter. The book is very different. The book series is very very different from the movie. Jeff Vandermeer has very quickly become one of my favorite authors and it's because he is so different. I read Born last year as well and that almost made it onto the list but I actually preferred the Area X trilogy to Born. This was because I just really liked the concept of the biology refracting in Area X. I really liked how it was executed. It is jumpy, it's confusing. When you're reading Jeff Vandermeer, you really have to zoom in and focus on Jeff Vandermeer. And Jeff Vandermeer is one of the authors who, there's very few authors who I'm like this with, but I have a handful of authors where I actually don't like to listen to their audiobooks because it's actually easier for me to understand it when I'm reading the written word. And Jeff Vandermeer is one of those authors. I find it difficult to listen to his audiobooks, so I always read his books either physically or on e-read. Loved the Area X trilogy. Um, a lot of people are really disappointed at the ending. I'm gonna be honest, I'm not sure what people expected. Um, this is The ending was underwhelming, but it was also kind of what I expected. So I really liked it. If you're looking for like body horror, biological intrigue, science fiction with a super ecological twist, the Area X trilogy is really great. You just have to go in knowing that you're gonna have to zoom in and focus in on it. Born is really fantastic for that as well. Like I said, Jeff Vandermeer has a very, very unique style of writing and he writes science fiction in a very different way than a lot of other science fiction authors that I have read. So I highly recommend him, but you have to go in with the knowledge that this is going to be different than a lot of science fiction that you've read. It's going to be different than a lot of books that you've read, but it's going to be worth it at the end and you're going to feel triumphant when you finish the book. And that's kind of like the, the cornerstone of Vandermeer and uh, I really liked it. I don't really want to talk about the plot of the Area X trilogy because figuring out what the Area X is about is kind of the whole plot. And so if I talk about how they figured out what the Area X was about, it's gonna spoil the plot for you. So 
basically, I would recommend you read it. It was fantastic. Just do it. Then I'm going to, for I think the third year in a row, I'm going to have a Talia Hibbert book on my top books of the year list. Take a hint, Danny Brown came out this year. I love Talia Hibbert. My friend Ray introduced me to Talia Hibbert a few years ago. I read Get a Life, Chloe Brown last year, and I loved it with all of my heart. And then in 2020, Take a Hint, Danny Brown came out. I actually think I like Take a Hint, Danny Brown even more than I liked um, get a life Chloe Brown and it's because I just really relate to Danny Brown in a lot of ways not necessarily in the no relationship kind of situation but in the very confident plus sized witch sort of way so it was really nice seeing you know this this plus sized woman and like a super hot rugby player it was just like kind of like the perfect romance novel for me and I just really love Talia Hibbert's voice I think she writes absolutely splendid romance and I know that when I pick up a Talia Hibbert romance I'm gonna leave happy with how it ends with how it's written with how it's handled I know I'm gonna leave happy when I read a Talia Hibbert romance and so I feel Felt really good about it. I loved Take a Hint Danny Brown. If you haven't read any Talia Hibbert, I definitely suggest you pick up Get a Life Chloe Brown and Take a Hint Danny Brown. Uh, the third one's going to be coming out this year about the third sister, Eva Brown, Eve Brown, Eva Brown, either or. I'm very excited about it. I love the sisters and I love Hibbert's writing. Then I want to talk about Axiom's End by Lindsay Ellis. Now this book has been long awaited for me. I was very excited for it to come out. This is a first contact um, alien book set in the mid 2000s, kind of like when, um, when Bush was president. So Axiom's End is a first contact novel. The main character is basically the daughter of a Julian Assange type of person and she stumbles upon an alien and then becomes the only person that the alien will communicate with humanity with. So she ends up accidentally playing this very, very, very important role in the first contact with these aliens. And more unfolds throughout the book. I'm not going to spoil it for you, but that is is the basic plot. It is First Contact set in the mid 2000s and it is really well done. I love Lindsay Ellis. I love Lindsay Ellis's videos and I just could feel it in my gut. Like I, I could feel it in my gut that Lindsay Ellis's book was going to be good. And then I read it and I was like, okay, this is just as good as I expected it to be. It was fantastic. I was really impressed with it. I flew through it. I really enjoyed it. And I just really liked it. Like I love a good first contact novel. There aren't a ton of first contact novels that are set 2000s and forward. Um, and I think Hank Green's An Absolutely Remarkable Thing, definitely, I mean, Lindsay has even said this, it paved the way for Axioms End to be able to come out. I hope it paves the way for more first contact novels set in the recent past or present. Um, I love a good first contact novel. So I'm excited to see more. I'm excited for the sequel. It's a series. There's going to be more. I can't wait for the second Axioms End book and it's going to be awesome. I loved it. It's just a solid book and if you like science fiction and you like anything to do with first contact books or like maybe or maybe not having sexual tension with monsters then you're gonna like Axiom's End. Next one is another romance book and it is One to Watch by Kate Stamen London. This book um, was incredible, stunning. I cried the first time I the like in the prologue and then I also cried at the end um, and then I cried kind of cried a couple times in the middle really well done um, it is about a plus-sized woman who is a very popular fashion blogger who goes viral for basically calling this books universe's bachelor et out for not having any diverse bodies and so she goes viral for that and then she gets contacted and they're like for the next season how would you like to be the diverse body on the bachelorette and she says for reasons that i'm not going to spoil for you yes let's do it and so she ends up going on the bachelorette as a plus size woman and i thought it was awesome it was really well executed it was fantastically well done i loved it it was so feel good it was fantastic it was romance it was wonderful i got feelings all the way through i just and, and I had been in a reading slump and it just really pulled me out of the reading slump. I thought it was fantastically well done. And I loved reading about the bachelors that, you know, our main character had to pick between. And I just thought it was fantastically well done. And I loved it. 
I loved it so much. The next two books that I am going to discuss are the first books that I knew I was going to put on this list. The first one I'm going to talk about as a standalone. The second one is a uh, trilogy. I loved these two kind of things that I'm going to talk about. It's four books in total, but I loved these the most in 2020. The first one is The Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern. The Starless Sea is a love letter to storytelling. It is a perfect book. <laughs> okay, I said it. Um, it is beautifully well written. It is fantastical. And, and the fantasy is, you know, like it is executed on so beautifully and it is just so well done. Reading this book brought me so much joy that I got a tattoo for it three weeks later. <laughs> ah! Ah! So this little bumblebee is actually in honor of the Starless Sea. I read that book and my perspective just kind of shifted a little bit. My perspective on writing and my perspective on reading and my perspective on stories, which is something I'm so passionate about and something I've always been so passionate about. The fact that it was a love letter to storytelling really spoke to me because I am someone who loves storytelling in all forms. And it was just so nice to read it. And I loved it. It was fantastic. Highly suggest everybody reads it. I think everybody needs to read it. I don't think you need to like a specific genre in order to enjoy The Starless Sea. Yeah, I think you just need to read it. The last three books that I am going to talk about are probably not going to be surprising to anyone who has heard me talk about books in 2020. And it is The Way of Kings, Words of Radiance, and Oathbringer by Brandon Sanderson, the first three books in the Stormlight Archive. I, um, I put the Stormlight Archive off for a really long time. Um, I don't know why I did. I've had the, my copy of The Way of Kings for years. I think I hauled it in like 2016 or something. And I love it. Um, oh my God, do I love, do I love the Stormlight Archive so much. Um, I'm trying to slowly make my way through Rhythm of War because I don't want it to be over. To be totally honest, like I don't want it to be over because then we're gonna have to wait. So The Way of Kings is a high fantasy series about a cast of characters and a magic system. And that's all I can really say without spoiling very important moments of the book um, or of the series rather. Brandon Sanderson is a fantastic fantasy writer. Um, there's a reason so many people talk about him and it's because he is a fantastic fantasy writer. He did such a good job with the Stormlight Archive. I love Shallan. I love Yasna. I love Kaladin who is just like my sweet depressed boy. There are so many characters that I truly adore from this series and they are deep and they are nuanced and they are well built out. The magic system is fantastic. I haven't seen a magic system that I haven't enjoyed from Brandon Sanderson, but I think this is my favorite. I absolutely adore it. The Stormlight Archive very quickly took over my life in the first half of 2020. When I finished Oathbringer, I cried. Um, I cried at the end of Words of Radiance as well, but I definitely, there's one moment at the end of Oathbringer where I just gasped audibly and just started crying. And it's just such a well done series. If you like fantasy and you haven't really found a high fantasy series that you really like, the Stormlight Archive is what I suggest. It is thick, it is hefty, it is a lot to read, but it is so worth it. And I am so glad that I picked it up in 2020. And that's why I needed it to be the final thing that I talked about that I gushed about the most. I adored everything about it. I am so excited to see where the story continues to go. And Yasna Colon is thick. That's it. Thank you so much for watching this video. Don't forget, I have all of my social media linked in the down bar. So you can follow me there if you would like. Make sure you like this video and subscribe to my channel. And let me know what your favorite books that you read in 2020 were. I almost said 2021, but that's where we're now. I keep, mm, yes, mm, okay. Um, let me know what your favorite books that you read in 2020 were. I would love to add new books to my list. I would love to hear what you enjoyed the most. Um, thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful morning, noon, night, evening, whatever time it is, wherever you are. Bye.